Hey there, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today I'm continuing to do decks for Outlaws of Thunder Junction Standard, and today's deck is Mono Red Aggro. Uh, but before I dive, dive into the deck, just a quick reminder, uh, if you're liking the videos and you want to help out the channel, uh, make sure to hit the like button for the videos you like. Uh, it definitely helps me out. And then if you want to stay up to date on the stuff that I'm doing and see the videos when I first post them, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps me out as well. So let's dive into the deck here. We're doing the Mono Red Aggro deck, uh, not to be confused with the Mono Red Prowess deck. I've noticed that uh, the Mono Red decks have kind of split into two prominent deck types. You have the Prowess version, and then you have the traditional um, Mono Red Aggro style. Uh, this one's the Mono Red Aggro style, but it's got a little bit of uh, interesting tech in there that kind of gives it some staying power. And I'll dive into it here. We'll cover the creatures first. So we've got uh, 16 creatures. Um, you do have the, some of the staples to the deck, the Monastery Swift Spear, Peter's Fugitive Codebreaker, uh, both of these creatures are prowess creatures with haste. Uh, Codebreaker is kind of nice though because it has the disguise ability and you can turn it face up for its disguise cost, which is discounted by one for each instance of sorcery in your graveyard. And then when you turn it face up, uh, you can discard your hand and draw three cards. That's pretty good in the late game when you usually have no cards in hand and he's a good way to refill it. Then we have a Slickshot Showoff, awesome card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction that you can, uh, uh, when you cast it, it has flying and haste. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Slickshot Showoff gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Or you can plot it for one and a red, which makes for some really explosive turns if you plot this card, along with uh, one of the other plot cards in the deck, which I'll cover in a, in a second here. But uh, he's definitely an explosive card that, that your opponents have to worry about. And then we get into, I guess you could call, say the beef of the creatures, but they're just three mana drop creatures, but they, they're pretty powerful in their own right. Uh, we have Squeed Dubious Monarch, Tutu Goblin, with haste, when he attacks, uh, you create a 1-1 one -one red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. And then you can cast Squee, Dubious Monarch, from your graveyard by paying 3 and a red and exiling 4 cards from your graveyard rather than paying his mana cost. We also have Godric, Cloaked Reveler, 3-3 uh, three, three haste, uh, Human Noble. He has Celebration, though, which uh, actually Squee goes really nicely with Godric due to the fact that he spits out that additional goblin, which uh, on the turn you cast uh, Godric, uh, and if you have Scree on the battlefield, it'll be able to trigger his Celebration ability if you haven't played another permanent. But uh, anyway, so his Celebration trigger uh, turns him into a 4-4 four, four, uh, dragon with flying and a base uh, base power 4-4, four, four, and he has Fire Breathing, which is pretty cool. Uh, another card, and actually this is kind of what gives the deck a bit of its staying power and plays real nicely with the Godric's uh, Celebration stuff is uh, Urbrass Forge. It's an artifact for 2 and a red. And uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can put an oil counter on it and create a X1 red Fire X in creature token with Trample and Haste, where X is uh, the number of oil counters um, on Urbrass Forge. And then you sacrifice the token at the beginning of the next end, end step. But like I said, uh, every, t every turn that, that token is going to hit the battlefield. And if you played something else pre pre combat, it's going to uh, trigger Godric if you have him on the battlefield. Some more uh, non-land or non-creature spells we have is Kamado faces Kakazan and then Demonic Ruckus, which you can plot for uh, one red. Demonic Ruckus is amazing due to the fact that it gives a creature plus one, plus one, and menace and trample. And when uh, it goes to the graveyard, you can draw a card. Uh, plotting this along with the Slickshot Showoff can make for some amazing explosive turns, um, really giving your opponents some, some major trouble. Then we have uh, 12 instances of sorceries. We have uh, four Monsters Rage, pl four Play with Fire, and four Lightning Strike. So, and we actually have, uh, so it means we have 12 or 24 uh, non creature spells, which play nicely in triggering the, uh, the show off, the Code Breaker, and, and the Swift uh, Monastery Swift Spear. And then the deck's running 20 land. You got 14 Mountain, two Sokazan, Sokaz uh, Crucible of Defiance, and Mishra's Foundry. So, it's a pretty fast, aggressive deck, and with a little bit of staying power due to the uh, Urbrass Forge and Squee and uh, some of the other uh, aggressive abilities of the deck. So anyway, so that's the deck. Let's go ahead and hop on the ladder and uh, see if we can wreck some havoc there. All right, so we are on the draw this this game. Um, yeah, we can play this. I'm gonna go ahead and I think we'll plot the ruckus. It's 
like it might be in a mirror match. Possibly. Okay. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and uh, do our own swift spear. Like Mono. We'll also do some ruckus here. Attack. Uh, this game is going to co probably come down to who went first. Just seeing what we can do here. Could probably take out the scomp and the etchings and also attack with a swift spear. Maybe play Godric next turn. Um. see here. So next turn though they're gonna probably have Kamano get us down to two. You know I'm gonna gonna play the play the long game. See if we can survive keeping a blocker back. Might be toast. They probably have a uh, some instance that'll wipe us out. Yep, monstrous rage. I had a feeling that was the case, and that's game. Bummer. Okay, so we're on the play now. Nice. Yeah, we'll keep that. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the ruckus. Another red deck. <laughs> they had enough of that. They didn't want to see any more. <laughs> Definitely a playable hand. Go ahead and plot the ruckus. We'll do a double uh, Kamano. keep the creature but we'll be able to spit out a pretty good token for one turn oh, we have to cast it never mind we don't get those plus one plus one counter bonuses
Okay, so we're probably going to have a pretty explosive turn here. That was coming. Yeah, we'll pass. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Vran. Nice. decline on that. Okay. I think we'll activate the, the foundry. Go to combat here. No sense of playing the Swiss Spear right now. Nice thing about the Forge is it gives us that consistent stream of creatures, at least one a turn. We got him. Huh, nice. Not really liking this hand. Uh, I'll go ahead and mulligan it. That's better. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this. I'm going to put back the Kamano faces Kakazan, though. Because we have a nice ramp just with those there. We've got the three land we need. Hey, look at that.
We'll do this first. <laughs> Some pretty good luck there. I'll just go ahead and utilize that extra bonus and attack. attack. We'll plot the ruckus after combat. That way we can have a good turn next turn as well. Good deal there. Let's see. We'll play the code breaker face down. there. did hers though. <laughs> oh boy. Um, maybe a one. Oh, that's yeah, rough. How much we can do, because next turn we we can't block the deep cavern vat, and we're at one. They got us. Uh, that's a rough, rough opener. I'm um, gonna mulligan that. A little better. Um, yeah, I think we'll we'll keep this. Put squeeze on the bottom. Uh, we're playing against a Boros Heroic. Interesting. Do the Code Breaker, and then we'll demonize it. This card I haven't seen in a while. Ouch. Wow. 
three forges all at once. While we can, I'm gonna get rid of that virtuoso. Drop our land. We can do consecutive turns with the Urbrask Forge. Now they're gonna have an explosive turn. We can too though. Got him. Nice. We're able to just get by by the skin of our teeth. All right, so that was the uh, mono red aggro deck, the aggro version. Um, did okay. Uh, we got uh, a little steamrolled there in uh, some of those games, and it seemed like that in that first game against the mono red, uh, just whoever went first was going to win that. But uh, we're able to. Uh, uh, assert our own uh, aggression towards some of those uh, other decks that that we beat so that was pretty cool um got a chance to see the the power of the Urbrass forge which like i said it gives you some nice staying power once you get it on the battlefield and if it goes unanswered it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger every turn and if you have multiples on the battlefield you're just going to keep pumping out those uh, trampoly haste creatures who, who get bigger and bigger so pretty nice uh, addition to the deck there um and then if you can get uh, godric on the battlefield like i said uh and I have a permanent uh, every turn being played. That's uh, not a land comboed with the Urbass Forge. You'll be able to get a good flying attack out of Godric as well. So pretty aggressive deck uh, for not being the mono red prowess and all. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a uh, link uh, for the deck list in the video description. If you want to check it out and give it a shot, try it out for yourself and uh, see what you think there. So, but I think that'll do it for me today. Uh, I'll be back again soon with another uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard deck video. Thanks again for watching. Till next time, everybody. We'll see you soon.